Welcome to Shamanus, the little city that didn't. Some of the unique barriers and challenges to resource-based coastal communities worldwide make their economies and members especially vulnerable. Distinctive resource-depleting challenges include storms, climate change, flooding, landslides, shoreline erosion, and pollution. Furthermore, social and economic factors also bear responsibility for resource depletion. In the face of these human, environmental, and economic challenges, communities and individuals can become resilient through adaptation and response. One way British Columbian coastal communities such as Shimanus have demonstrated resilience is through the establishment and development of a tourism economy. The focus of our video is to take you through a tour of Shimanus as a historically resource-based community, which has proven itself to be resilient by using the history of its diminishing resource base to create a thriving tourist attraction. The town murals provide an excellent way to illustrate its history, from indigenous habitation of the area to its most recent adaptations. The First Nations Cowichan tribe occupied the Shimanus area pre-European colonization. Within the Cowichan tribe, bands preserved relationships by visiting, intermarrying, and providing support during times of war. The indigenous bands were successful in sustaining their lifestyle by moving and living in harmony with the seasons, fishing, trapping, and hunting. Unfortunately, European contact resulted in direct attempts to assimilate this culture through mechanisms such as the residential school on nearby Cooper Island. The next mural symbolizes the beginning of colonization in the area. This native princess overlooks Jemena's Harbor during the arrival of the first European ship, called Reindeer. The area was first explored by Sir James Douglas in 1852. After European contact, colonizers began establishing what was to be a sawmill and copper-based economy over the next century. The first sawmill was opened in 1862, and the area was mainly noted as a sawmill district until 1982, when the mill was closed due to an extensive period of extraction and depletion of resources. The murals depict farmed animals such as oxen and horses, steam powertrains, steam ships, and vehicles that were used for sawmill work. Without the success of the sawmill, the area would have remained uninhabited by Europeans. With the help of British Columbia's province-wide redevelopment fund, the town began an adaptation process of compensating for the loss of the mills. The process included revitalization of the main street and beautification of the town's core and public spaces. In turn, this process led to a mural project which started on the outside walls of the town's buildings. In 1871, the first child that was born to European descent in the Shimanus area was Julia Eskew. Billy Thomas was the first male child, born in 1874, and lived until he was 102 years old. Upon settlement of European families, there became a need for schools, general stores, a post office, a telephone company, a liquor depot, police, and firemen. The town's growth began attracting people from different cultures, such as Japanese, Chinese, Scottish, and Irish. The town's Chinese heritage is portrayed by a store being operated by Ning Chang. The store still exists today as the 49th Parallel Grocery. A strong sense of community bond can be seen as residents come together to play hockey on frozen Fuller Lake. Prior to settlement, culture continued to flourish, however, the resource-based economy collapsed. A major shift was required, and unemployed mill workers needed to adapt. This mural shows the unveiling of the mural project with a log cutting and is dedicated to all of the volunteers who helped make the transformation of Shimanus from a mill-based economy to a tourism economy a success. The founder of the Festival of Mural Society is Carl Schutz, who is mainly responsible for the idea behind the project. The first five murals were completed in 1982 and are based on historic pictures taken from a book written by local Harry Olson. In the summer of 1983, seven more murals were completed which started an exciting trend that brought tourists into the area. The town has continued to show resilience from the gradual establishment of over 70 new businesses, including the Shimanus Theatre and Museum, which attract over 80,000 tourists a year. The Mural Society was running out of historical subjects and needed to further adapt by reaching out to a different demographic. Now Shimanus is entering into a new era of murals inspired by the paintings of world-renowned artist Emily Carr. The first mural was completed in 2009, and two more were completed in 2010. 
Themes in Emily Carr's paintings include First Nations culture, forest landscapes, and BC West Coast skies. Although murals have had a positive influence on Chimanus' economy, new residents pose a challenge, as they may have no ties to the history of the town. Other communities throughout Canada, such as Cobalt in Ontario, have already taken Chimanus as an example to follow of a successful transition from a resource to tourism-based economy. With the predicted future of climate change, many environmental factors are sure to impact coastal communities in particular. The resilience Chimanus has shown makes it an exemplary leader for coastal communities worldwide.